So in this episode, I want to show you 10 hacks in the color page. These are not necessarily new things. These are things that I do on a fairly regular basis that certainly improve my productivity in the color page. So I'm going to share those with you. And this episode has come about, I'm getting close to my 100,000 subscribers, which is really exciting for me. And I put a post out in my community tab just saying if anyone's got ideas for episodes they'd like to see leading up to that. And this episode was suggested by Thomas Zamola. So thank you for that. And it's basically a nod to my first ever episode episode, which was also 10 color page tips. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you do enjoy my content, think about subscribing, get me to that 100,000. And when I get there, I'm going to do a huge live stream. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for it yet, but I'm going to make it good. So uh, anyway, let's get on with this. So tip number one is uh, using display qualifier focus. So let me show you how that works. So down here, we've got our scopes. Okay. And if I want to sample an image, you need to be in this mode here, this qualifier mode. And if I just put my cursor over anywhere on this image, what I can do is use display qualifier focus, which is down here. And this allows me to see exactly where I am on the scope. So this is great for measuring uh, skin tones and just seeing what level you're at with your skin tones. Your skin tone should be sitting somewhere around this region here. So if I just put this on her skin tone there, we can see that we're quite clearly sitting in pretty much exactly where I want it to be. It also works in the other scopes as well. So I can use it in my parade and then I can see the individual RGB values as well. So it's a really good little tip. So tip number two is a little hack I do using stills. So what I'm going to do is create a new album in here and I'm going to call it fixes. And what I do, and if I find a problem on a shot and I don't want to fix it exactly at that moment, I just mark it with a still. Maybe I've got my client with me. I don't want to be messing around with this sort of stuff yet. We want to carry on with the grade and I'll come and do all my fixes at the end. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to play this shot through. And you see there's an exposure change there. So I'm just using my left and right arrow keys to find the exact frame. So what I could do is just put a marker on here. So I could just right and click here and say add marker, like so. But what I do instead is I grab a still of it. So I'm going to grab that as a still. It's going to go into the folder that I've got highlighted. And what this does is it actually takes a timecode stamp as well. So it's exactly that frame. So when I finish my program, so we just grade all the rest of the show. I go to my fixes folder and have a look at all the items that need fixing. And if I right hand click on here and just say match reference wipe frame, it goes to that exact frame. So then I know exactly what I need to do. And once I've done it, I just right hand click and delete them. So tip number three is in my effects library. So you bring up the effects library by clicking up here. And obviously DaVinci Resolve has evolved over many versions now and the effects library is really getting pretty populated. And sometimes it's quite hard to find the actual one that you want. So what I can do is either use the search bar here. So let's search for halation, for example, and there it is. Or what I can do is just press this star icon next to it. Let's get rid of that one. And then if you click up here, you can go to your favorites and all the ones that I've starred are now in my favorites folder. So it's easy to find the ones that I use on a regular basis. The other thing you can do in here is just collapse them by just simply double clicking here. And then you can just see the categories. So tip number four involves the effects as well. So what I'm going to do is bring that halation onto a node. And you see here we have all this menus appear. Now some of these open effects have very extensive menus and a better view to work with this is to press shift and F. This way you get a nice large image to work with so you can uh, accurately have a look at what's happening in your menus. But also you see all the menus available for that particular effect. So that's shift and F. It's a really nice view. Shift F again takes you back to where you were. So tip number five is one of my favorites. This is playheads. These have been in here forever and not many people know they actually exist. So what are playheads? In DaVinci Resolve, we've got our playhead here, okay? But actually inside the system is four different playheads that you can activate. So if we go up to here to the color menu, you can go to active playhead. And if I now go not playhead A, but activate playhead B, what happens when I move this playhead is that playhead A gets left behind and playhead B becomes the new playhead. And what this means is that any point in time I can go back to here by simply loading up playhead A. Now there's a keyboard shortcut to actually flick between the two of those. So if I press control option and then use my numeric keypad, I can press one for A and two for B. So let's load up another two. If we go active playhead C, and then you see A and B are left behind. And then let's load up D as well. Active playhead D. And there we go, we've got four playheads. This is great for long form documentaries. If you just want to mark particular scenes, you might want to be able to do a comparison for this. And it's really easy. So again, control, option, and then one, two, three, 
for. And then whichever one is active when you press play is the one that starts moving. To reset those, just go to the color menu, active playhead and reset. And if you've got the advanced panel, you can actually activate those directly on your panel. So tip number six is using versions. So we're quite used to using the still image wipe here. So if I double click one of these, there's our wipe. So we can, this is the shot we're grading. This is the still wipe. And this is a really good way of balancing shots together. You just have them side by side and you can see them side by side on the scopes. But versions takes it to the next level. So let's click on here, which is our versions. And we can pull down this menu and select any different type of version. So for example, here we've got neighbor clips. So this is showing me the two clips previous to the shot and one after it, and we can see them all side by side. So it's a really good way of just checking that you're staying balanced throughout your scene. But we can go beyond that as well. So you can have selected still grades. So this is comparing the grade from the still that I select here. Okay. If you want to see the actual still, you go selected still images. And so for example, if I go to my vector scope, you're actually seeing the two images sat on top of each other. So if I select another one, you can see that's quite clearly the pink one and there's the blue one. So that means I can help balance these shots easily. So let's take this one. And if I just move my offset, you can see the trace moving here. So all I've got to do is get them sat on top of each other and we know that they're balanced. And the other useful trick with versions is that you can actually utilize those playheads. So if I select playheads in here, like so, we've got our four playheads. And the beauty of this is I can choose the exact frame that I want to see in the version. So if I go to option control one, which is playhead A, I can now move it frame by frame to line it up exactly where I want it to be analyzed. So this is good if you've got an interview, for example, and they're facing that way, you want to bring them around so you can see their skin and you can see where the light's actually bouncing off their skin. You can use your playheads to get the exact frame that you want. So it's a really useful little tip. So tip number seven is a quick hack using windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a window here. I'm going to draw a shape. I can't see it yet, so I'm going to select it here. And I'm going to do a kind of vignette shape. So it's something like that. And then we need to invert it. So it actually becomes a vignette. And I use these quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is actually save it as a preset. Instead of having to draw that shape each time, what you can do is click on here, say save as new preset. I'm going to call it vignette one. And that's done. And then I can make another shape here. And I can save that as vignette two. And then when I want to apply a new shape, let's go to another shot and I want to put a vignette on here, I can simply click here and select the vignette that I want and it's done. So tip number eight is using my node graphs. Now when you save a still, you can actually right hand click on it and say display node graph. And that shows you everything that is involved on that still. So these are all the different nodes that I've used and I can take one node property. Let's take this one, number 12, for example. If you middle mouse click, by the way, you can move around this. You can expand these out and I can drag just that node and copy it to another clip. So I've just taken the color warper property and applied it there. But you can do that without saving it as a still. So you can go to any shot in your timeline here, right hand click on it and just say display node graph. There's the node graph for that particular shot. And I can take any property and apply it to another clip. So it's really simple to do without saving a still. Okay, tip number nine is about layers. So when you're working in multiple layers on your timeline, let's just go to the edit and I'll show you what's going on here. If we go to the beginning, you can see we've got a whole layer of graphics going on here. Now, when I go to the color page, you see all those layers here, okay? But when I go between the shots, what it's actually doing when I go to the next clip, it's actually flicking between the graphics. And I don't want that. I just want to grade the shots. I don't want to grade the actual graphics. So what I could do is disable that track. So it's V6 is the graphics. However, the graphics have now literally disappeared, so I can't see them anymore. And you might want to see the graphic as a reference, or it might be an overlay, it might be a, a light leak or something like that. So instead of disabling the track, what you can do is press Option and click it. So I'm clicking on V6 with my Option key pressed. So what it does is it disables that track, but you still see the graphic or the light leak or whatever you've got on that track. So that's a really good way of being able to grade underneath graphics. But when I want to grade the next shot, anything on V6, i.e. my graphics, is not included. So tip number 10 is great if you work on a laptop. What I want to do is get the most out of this color page interface. So what we can do is get rid of the timeline, for example, and we can get rid of the clips. But I find the clips are actually quite useful to have. But the hack is this. If I bring my clips back, you can actually change the size of them. So if I go to my view, go to timeline thumbnail size, and then also it makes them bigger than they need to be. We can actually go small, medium, or large. Put that down to small. We've got more area to work with now for our nodes and our menus and that sort of thing, but we still see all the thumbnails. So we can actually right and click 
and still go and display our node graph as we were doing before. So I hope at least a few of those hacks were new to you and they're gonna help your productivity moving forward. Uh, if you like this content, think about subscribing, hit the like button for me. I've got about three years worth of content on YouTube, so check out my playlists and look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.